a second attempt at, uh, at recording this video because I guess the first one didn't work, so I have to do it all over again. Fun, fun, fun. Ugh. Okay, um, so sample diploma question here. So we have a girl who is 122 centimeters tall, uh, stands 40 centimeters in front of a particular mirror. Her virtual image in the mirror is upright at 54 centimeters. So we need to find out what type of mirror it is and where the girl's image is located. So I'm gonna switch screens here to our camera. There we go. Sorry, I didn't have this set up. Switch that around, make it a little bit brighter. There we go. So we have high, ho, die, do, and f. Okay, so it says that the girl is 122 centimeters tall. So that's the height of the object. And the object is always positive. And she stands 40 centimeters. So that's the distance of our object. And her virtual image is upright and 54 centimeters tall. So the height of our object is 54 centimeters tall. Okay, so from this, we can figure out what type of lens this is because you can see that she is. Um... Actually, no, sorry, let's. Uh... Let's just do it like this. So we want to find out uh, the distance to the girl's image. So the distance is going to be negative because it says that it's virtual in the question. So to do this, we just have to go high over home equals negative die over dough. And we're trying to find die. So we'll move dough over there. And then I'm just going to move my negative to the other side. So it's going to be negative 40 and then 54, and then 122. So we get 40 times 54 divided by 122. We get 17.7, and it's two sig dig, so we get 18 centimeters. And because it says in the question that it's a virtual image, right, virtual images uh, can take place in both of these, but since, um, the girl is 122 and it shows that it's 54 she's smaller so because she's smaller it's got to be convex because it'd be bigger if it was concave and it's 18 centimeters okay, the image of the object placed at 12 centimeters in front of a convex mirror which has a focal length of 10. Um, so if you did this calculation wise, because it's a convex mirror, you have to make sure that you make your focal length negative, or you can just memorize those characteristics, right? If it's a convex mirror, it's always gonna be virtual, it's always gonna be erect, and it's always gonna be smaller. So we get C as our answer. Okay, and this one looks a little weird because the object is upside down, but that doesn't change anything. Um, what's a little bit tricky with this question, the distance from the object to the focal point is 2.4 so this is 2.4 centimeters and then the length of the focal point is 4.3 so we always want to measure our distance to the mirror so this is going to be 6.7 that's going to be the distance of our object so that's what we want to do so i'll switch over to this screen okay so the distance to our object is 6.7 centimeters and we have a focal length of 4.3 centimeters. And we're trying to find the distance to the image. So we would use one over F equals one over die plus one over do. And we want to find die. So we subtract a do, one over do from both sides. And we'd one over it. And that's how we'd find our die. So it'd be one over 4.3 minus one over 6.7, and then we'd have to one over our answer. So 4.3 minus 6.7, and then one over it, and we get 12 centimeters as our answer. So it looks like D is the correct answer. Okay.
So here's curved lenses, attempt number two. So describe quantitatively simple optical systems consist. Yeah, so we're just doing the same stuff, but just with lenses. Um, so uh, a flat lens doesn't change the direction of the light. It will refract as it enters the medium, but bend back as it enters the air, right? So if we send a beam of light in like this, it'll refract in there, but then when it enters or when it exits, it'll just go to the same line. And if we had a very thin lens, uh, it would almost travel in a completely straight line. So say the lens was almost, it was only this thin, right? It just travels a little bit straighter because it has less time to bend in. So what we focus on is we focus on curved lenses. And with curved lenses, um, the angle of incidence is always different from the angle of um, refraction. So uh, you end up getting uh, the light beams to change direction. So the simplest convex lens has two surfaces. So we, if we just draw a line down this, we have two con, uh, convex lenses, and this is two concave lenses, and they're back to back like that, just like a magnifying glass. Uh, and the only place where light doesn't bend is the optical center. So this here is the optical center right there, uh, right on the principal axis and right in the middle there. So the only really different thing about these is what we consider virtual and real. So when we had a mirror and we had our image that's right there, we would consider this real. And I said that oh, if this is on the same side as the object, then it's real. But for lenses, if we have an object out there and we have our image over here, this would be considered real. And what we base it on is we base it on where the observer is. So the observer, this is an eyeball, a physics eyeball. So this is the observer watching and the observer can't be inside the mirror. So if it's outside the mirror, it's going to be real. And lenses are kind of like, you can think of them like glasses. So the observer is always going to be the opposite side of the, of the lens. If this is a pair of glasses, this is an eyeball, you're looking outside the glasses, but the image is going to produce on your eye here. So this is real. So we base it on our observer. So that's uh, the main difference is um, what we consider real and difference is, is different for lenses and mirrors. Okay, so just like with mirrors, there's three possible rays that we draw parallel to the principal axis through the optical center and then through the F and then refracting parallel to the principal axis. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll draw those on for you because that doesn't make a lot of sense just reading it. Um, so we'll practice those. Okay. And remember only two of the three lines need to match up. Okay, so this is our first case. Same cases as before, we're outside 2F. So we don't call it C for a lens, we call it 2F. It's really the same thing just because it doesn't really make a circle like it did before, so we call it 2F and F. So our first line goes to the parallel to the principal axis until we hit this optical center. And then it goes through our focal point like that. And our next line just goes straight through the optical center. And our third line goes through the focal point on this side and then goes parallel to the principal axis. And you can see that the object that we create or the image that we create is right there. And if we write out our characteristics, you can see this one's one box high and this one's just a little bit less than one box high. So it's gonna be smaller. It's gonna be real, because it's on the opposite side, and it's gonna be inverted. Okay, so those are our characteristics if we're outside 2F. So if we're at 2F, parallel to our principal axis, oops, let's turn that back to, yeah, there we go. So parallel to our principal axis through our focal point, first line, second line is through the optical center, and then third line is through the focal point, and then parallel to the principal axis. And the image that we create is here. So when we're at F, it's the same size. They're both one box tall, it's inverted, and it's real. 
Okay. And when measuring the focal point for this, it's really important that you measure it from the optical center. So the focal point would be one, two, three boxes or centimeters, or whatever those boxes represent. Okay. So our third case is between 2F and F. So we draw those lines again. So parallel to our principal axis through F. Our next line is through our optical center like that and then through F and then parallel to our principal axis. So um, our lines don't actually match up on the screen. I can use the whiteboard in real class, but you can't see anything off of the screen. But what we end up getting is we get this super tall object here. And that tells us that it, it is bigger. It is inverted. And it is real. Okay, so that's between 2F and F. Very similar to mirrors. Okay, and then when we're at F, we go parallel to our principal axis, then through F, and then through our optical center, like that. And our third line we can't actually draw on because we'd have to go through F and that would bring us straight down. But you only ever need two of the three lines and you can see that these lines are parallel anyway. So what we'd create is we'd create no image at all. Okay, and then our last scenario is when we're inside of F. So our first line would be parallel to our principal axis. Let's try that again. Parallel to our principal axis. And then through F. And our second line is through the optical center. Again, we can't do our third line. And you can see these lines won't ever meet up on this side. But they're not parallel this time. So we're going to switch to a dotted line. And we're going to just continue over here and continue over here and that's where those two lines meet up and you can see that that's the image that we create so we create a bigger image or larger and now it is virtual because it's on the other side and it's erect So we, again, we only have one case for a diverging lens here. So we'll draw out those lines. And this one's a little bit messy. So our first line goes parallel to our principal axis. And then we need to take our ruler and we need to match it up with uh, the focal point on the virtual side like that. That's pretty good. And then we draw our line and it goes like that, right? It goes off like that. And I'm gonna do a dotted line for what that would look like if it continued over on this side like that. So that's our first line. It goes outwards, but we can continue that dotted line on the same side. And then our second line is the same, it goes through the optical center. We already see where these two lines match up, but I'll draw on our third line as well. So our third line aims for the focal point on the real side. So I'll draw that on. So see how I'm aiming for the focal point. So I'll go there until I hit the optical center and then it goes parallel to the principal axis and that parallel line I'm going to continue on the other side that parallel line is going to go like that and we see that all three of our lines get out of here ruler all three of our lines match up on the same spot they all match up right here and what we get is we get a smaller virtual and erect image. Okay, that's the only characteristics. And it's called the divergent links because you can see how all three of these lines diverge away from each other on the real side. Okay, so 
uh, it's important to know these sign conventions and, and for converging mirrors, it's the same as converging less lenses, right? Our object is always positive and if it's converging, our focal length is positive. But since we get an inverted image, our height is gonna be negative, but it's real, so our distance is positive. When we're inside of F, right, it's still converging, so all these are positive, but we get that erect image, so our height is positive, but it's virtual, so our um, distance is negative. And then for diverging lenses, just like with diverging mirrors, we have to have a negative focal point, right? And we get that um, erect image, so our height is positive, but it's virtual, so that's going to be negative. So it's really important to put those proper negatives and positives in because questions won't always say them directly. You need to know that. Okay, so to sum all of this up, um, if we're outside of 2F, it's going to be smaller for converging and then same size and then bigger. And then um, for all three of these, they will all be inverted. And for all three of these, they will all be real. And then if we're at F, we don't get any image. And then we're, if we're inside F, we get a bigger object, uh, but this time it's erect and it's virtual. And then diverging, there's only one situation. It always creates a smaller uh, erect and virtual image. Okay. Um, yeah, so if you memorize this chart, it's really helpful for questions that are, that are gonna come up. Okay, so I just have one question because the math is all the same. So I'll just show you with a lens, it doesn't actually make a difference. If you knew how to do this stuff from before, you'll know how to do this stuff. So we have a five centimeter tall candle. So that's the uh, height of our object, which is positive. And it's placed five centimeters from a curved lens. So the distance of the object is positive five centimeters, um, producing a virtual image that's 10 centimeters tall. Um, so the height of the image is 10 centimeters. What is the focal length and what type of lens is used? So let's switch over to this. Um, so to find the focal length, we're gonna have to use this. Oops. Okay. And then we need die, so we can use high over ho equals negative die over do. And we're trying to find die, so we move do up top. I'll move my negative over there. And we get negative five centimeters and 10 centimeters for our high, and then our hoe is five centimeters. So I can do that in my head. Um, five, five cancel out, so we're gonna get negative 10 centimeters for our die. And that makes sense, right? Because uh, the negative means that it is um, distance from the image. It looks like it's gonna be inverted, or sorry, yeah, it's inverted. Um, but the distance to the image, oh, sorry, the height of the image, um, the height of the image is erect, um, but it's virtual. So it looks like we create a virtual image that's bigger. Um, yeah. So if we calculate this, um, we rearrange like this, and we can find our focal length. So, sorry, let me just go back to that. So we end up getting the distance to the image is negative, so we get a virtual but we get a bigger image. So I am the only way we can get a virtual image is if it's a converging lens, if it's a convex lens. So I'm guessing that this is gonna be positive when we calculate it. So one over negative 10 plus one over positive five, and then one over that. And then if we do that, we end up getting our F which is 10 centimeters and it's positive, which means it's converging, which means it's convex, just like we predicted. Okay, so uh, math is all the same. Um, yeah, and that's, that's it. So uh, 
hopefully this one recorded all the way because I'm not recording you another one. And uh, this is all of our um, homework. So give that a go and send me an email if you have any questions.